Ronnie Curran, Mayor Ronnie Curran. Hey, Philip. How are you tonight? Hope you're doing well. Every day is a holiday. Every meal is a banquet. All our members of the chamber treat me like a trust advisor. Ronnie, how's your there you audience? Go. There you go, getting your feet wetter every day, right? And I try I don't my know, best. I, I was, I was, I came into the office a few minutes ago, and the weather is starting to look pretty bad out there. So uh, I hope we can make it through the show without any storm getting too rough. Uh, we've had some uh, over the years. We had some some storm related some storm related problems here. So um, I hope I hope we make it tonight pretty good, Phil. It has been blustery. I just drove down from Franklin and back down to Youngsville, and uh, yeah, I was going sideways on on Capitol every time a gust hurt, hit me. I, w I just got a text message. I forty is closed. They had a uh, accident out there. Um, I get. I think it's. I think it's closer to Durham than Raleigh, and uh, five cars. It said was involved. So they they got the Ouch. got the whole I forty closed. That's gonna, that's a mess out there. Then I'm, glad I'm not out there in that. Sure. Better places to be, ain't it? So what you been up to, Philip? What's been going on with the chamber the last uh, few weeks? Anything happening? Well, uh, there is there is a lot happening. We're actually going to have a chamber relaunch in, in May. Um, I'm still putting together the public relations part of the side of it, the press releases. But we have changed so much with the Rollsville Chamber in the last three months, uh, coming on board, uh, getting a new um, um, uh, chamber board, uh, ch chairman of the board, Ken Adrian, who's mm -hmm. the director of Granite Falls. Yeah. He has brought uh, – he's – jumped in and said, I will be chair for 2024. And literally we're, we've got pretty much refreshed the entire new, uh, the entire board of directors. Uh, we have a very energetic board of directors that are saying, Hey, let me go own barbecue and bands this year. And let's turn it into something beyond barbecue and bands. So there, there is, there is a, a vibe of energy that's coming into uh, the chamber that it just hasn't been there for a while. Granted that we haven't had a director, an executive director for about a year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there was a lot to do and there still is a lot to do, but you know, with a new board and new board chair, uh, me now in place, um, we are going to, uh, you know, I just got a flash uh, of lights here myself. Uh, weather might be hitting me. Um, but this is definitely, I, I say this hesitantly because I haven't really got a tagline yet. This is not your grandpappy's chamber anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard you say that. I actually uh, was able to attend the event you had in town um, last week, I guess it was, or maybe we called Business out. after hours, yeah. yeah and uh, it's a good event. You guys got to go. I was really uh, I was really pleased to see the turnout. Looks like uh, it was at Main Street Tavern. It looked like it was pretty full. A lot of people there. A lot of energy coming in, a lot of the businesses, not just, you know, businesses that are moving to Roseville or opening up in Roseville or are already in Roseville. It's it's companies outside of Roseville as well that see the potential of this market and want to get exposure to residences, residential customers, as well as commercial customers in Roseville. So there's a lot of focus on you, Ronnie. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's a lot going on, uh, you know, since the last time we've had the show We've had quite a few things I had been involved in um, through uh, throughout the. Do uh, tell. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all it's always a lot going on. One of one of the interesting things I will mention, Philip. I actually uh, we have a annual a monthly mayors meeting. All all twelve mayors uh, try to get together once a month, and and this month we had it. Uh, well, actually, about into March we had it at uh, at the PNC Center over in Raleigh. Um, Mayor Baldwin from Raleigh uh, hosted. We had the, the executive director of the Centennial Campus there, and um, and the uh, and the person that runs the the uh, the PNC Center, and they were going over some future plans they are having at uh, at at that center, and and they they're they're planning to turn the, the that that place into a a really destination place where you're going to have offices and hotels and everything around Carter Finley and the PNC center. That whole area is, is, has big plans. So that was exciting to hear. That was one, one of the things that uh, kind of had going on. Um, I, we had a couple of good things around the high schools. Um, you know, one of the exciting things that 
the women's basketball team won the state 4A championship, which is the highest we, uh, grade. Uh, we had one of the players in the room this morning at the graduation for youth leadership for Roseville. Yeah. It was uh, yeah. it was fantastic. It it was, and uh, very excited for them. We actually we actually was able to give them uh, a proclamation uh, last board meeting uh, in April first of April. So that, that's pretty exciting. But one of the things uh, we had at the high school I went to, Philip, they had what they call the shed building competition. And uh, and they typically have had this at Cary High School for the last dozen or so years. And this is the first time Roseville has ever hosted at Roseville High School. And it, it was very, very, uh, very nice. It, it turned out pretty good. They may... Uh, they may come back to Roseville again next year, but they actually brought schools in from all over the county uh, competition uh, from the carpentry uh, uh, shop to build. They built 12 sheds, I think it was, or maybe it was 20. 20. I believe it was 20 sheds. 20 sheds. And, um, yeah, and, uh, and and they had the electrical apartment there. And one thing they told me that I, I didn't know until I went to this thing is – our high school is planning to have a, a, a HVAC uh, a curriculum out there for next year. Next year, and as you and know, you know uh, uh, one of somebody was echoing. Philip, I can hear it on my end. Uh, as you know, you know, kind of, kind of, the culture is changing a little bit. It's, it's a lot of need for service industry people, and I think our high school is doing a good good job of teaching carpentry, teaching um, uh, electrical, and also even construction. Um, uh, building. Excellent. Yeah, I know uh, when I did a tour of some of the uh, the high schools and also community colleges, uh, welding, um, I'm a welder from my childhood, I actually ran it, grew up in a welding supply, welding manufacturing, and uh, welding instructors were telling me that uh, it's a two-year program at Wake Tech and they can't keep kids in for more than a year and they get hired away at $45 an hour because the, the school, the, the company will pay them $45 an hour and pay for their second year of, of education. So it's, it's, it's hot. It is. It is. It's very, it's very, uh, very much needed nowadays with, uh, you know, you, you need service people, you need people build houses, you need people that can do electrical work and, you know, all the time, the summer's coming. There'll be a lot of AC units breaking down. So you need people that can do that. And it's been a shortage lately. So uh, everybody can't go to college. And, uh, and you know, this is a really good thing to get people prepped to go to a tech, technical college like you're talking about to get a, a nice associate degree to do service work for sure. I learned a lot from Mike Rowe over the years. Mike Rowe of Dirty Jobs. He was uh, one of my sons were in Boy Scouts. We went to jamborees. Mike was one of the keynote speakers at the National Jamboree. He was all about work uh, hard and smart, and essentially re very much promoting the trades. And one of my four sons definitely got the message. He's a plumber, probably making more money than I am at 24 as a plumber. So uh, he's he's making a good life. Yeah, you can do that. You can really, uh, you can really excel in in that type of work. Not not only that, you can start your own business. You know, you work as apprentice for a while, you learn to trade, start a business, and uh, and last thing I mentioned, you know, we just uh, we just had the graduation class of uh, of the high schools. Um, I, I think the Roseville Area Leadership Program just graduated uh, today. I think I, I wasn't I wasn't uh, there. I didn't make it today, but. Uh, you know, they always have some graduates uh, that really is uh, is providing leadership, future leaderships uh, to uh, to the area and uh, and all over everywhere. So you need all kinds of uh, high school needs all kinds of people from developing leaders, developing craft people, service people. And also, you know, just about all. And Dan, you know, Dan's been working on uh, getting a a military type. Uh, activity going out there, maybe the, the Navy, a, a Navy cadet program is kind of what he's, he's been working on. And hopefully we can start that in the fall. So we've got a really great high school and really they're doing a great job out there. Have to give uh, Principal Perry a lot of credit for what he's got going on. Absolutely. Sure. Um, so who we got up first today? Uh, I don't know. You, you, uh, you tell me who our guests are. Do we have any guests today? We have a couple. We've got uh, Tisha Baker Lowe and Coach Valerie Grasso. Let's uh, let's kick it off with Tisha. She's got some 
things she would like love to talk about. Bring her to the stage here. There she is, Tisha. Hi. She had a, I've seen a lot of her today. We she's had a very busy morning and a very it's been a very been busy, busy day, Philip. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for um, attending our youth leadership graduation. Um, just so you all know, we had um, 19 students graduate this morning. They participated in a nine month long um, leadership cohort. Um, and I was excited to be their program director and facilitator. We had some really great guests and they did a great job. So we appreciate the support that we've received from the community. Thank you guys. Uh, yeah, that, that, we really, really, I've, I've been involved with the leadership um, program for a long time. Actually, actually brought them out to, uh, to uh, town hall a week or so ago and had a really good time. And uh, it's a lot of good things happening at the high school and really just appreciate all, all the people like you and, and others that really give time and effort to, uh, to give some time to our, our young people. So, um, to get them, it's, it's our future really. And, and that leadership program is our future for sure. So, um, yes. really good, really good there. You know, tonight's show is a little bit towards uh chamber, um, Philip, because both of our guests are chamber members, and they got businesses associated with the chamber, and uh, and show show to, to, to uh, Tisha, um, and, her, and her business, you know, I I seen her at the uh, at the business expos and stuff, and she really got an interesting business. I want to talk to her about tonight. Um, she does. I'm gonna let y'all talk. I'm gonna go find our second guest and get her ready to go. Y'all enjoy, and uh, I'll be listening. All okay, right. thank you. Thanks, Philip. Well, well, good to have you on. I hope you, I hope you're doing well, um, yes. and and everything's going good. I know uh, you you put a lot of, of effort in with the leadership program. I mean, you, you really do, and and being a leader of that, and and uh, it's a good group of students. And do you feel like you had a really good year this year with them? We had a really good year. So um, this was my first year lead facilitating the program, and um, not that I haven't done it before, but I'd done it here in Roseville. And we normally would take, uh, well, I was told in the past, they only take 12 to 15 students. And I misspoke, we had 20, not 19. Wow. So 20 was a lot of students. And so, but we made it work. And every month we had a different focus. We had a couple of field trips. We had some guest speakers come in and we had, uh, we did Shark Tank this morning, which was really good. Um, the students got to pitch their ideas and we had some chamber members serve as guest uh sharks to uh offer up the money and then they did their capstone presentations on personal branding so it was a lot of content but it was really meaningful work and it's what i enjoy doing i enjoy facilitating a lot so um it didn't feel like work um now i was a little bit tired this afternoon but um it was um it was great so really proud of the students and their parents and again the support that we received from the community well, good, good. So tell us a little, tell the people, I, I know you know a lot of people around town uh, being with the chamber and stuff like that, but maybe a, a few watching that uh, that don't know uh, a lot about uh, who you are. And uh, so tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, how, how did you, you're not far from here. I understand you're from, from that little that little town next door here. Uh, so, uh, and, and probably, you know, they, they, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot bigger now than, than, uh, than they used to be, but, um, and Broughton high school, I believe. I, I am a cap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You just caught short for cap, but, uh, but tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe, you know, how did you, how do you move from Raleigh out to this little place out here? Yeah, thank you for asking. So, um, like you said, I went to Broughton High School. I went to college at um, the North Carolina A&T State University, home of the Aggies. I was just there yesterday. Um, I uh, studied business economics and moved back home to Raleigh and uh, started my career. And uh, in 2006, I moved over to that little town you're talking about, Wake Forest. And stayed there for several years. And in 2021, I moved next door to Roseville and just quickly got into the community here. So community is something that I value. And um, yeah, so been working in corporate America all my career and started my business actually four years ago in 2020. And um, that's my story. 
I'm a mom and I have two little dogs. <laughs> so what, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you find? Do you find anything unique about Roseville? Is there anything about Roseville that, you know, you said you lived in Raleigh and Wake Forest. So that's, that's a couple of um, communities, really, really the two that join us. Both of them are. Do you, is there anything unique about Roseville that you find? Yes, there's so many people that I meet that are native Roseville. Like they can tell me the history of like every rock quarry, um, mm -hmm. historic buildings. Um, I didn't even realize there was like a little museum downtown Roseville. Right. Um, the students and I went and I've been living here for almost three years and I had no idea that that was there. So it's a lot of like history and little nuggets out here in Roseville that make it a charming little place to live yeah you, you know we, we really i guess you would call it late blooming town mm -hmm. you know all the rest of the towns in wake forest i mean not wake county uh including wake forest is always you know they've been bigger than us they've been you know we kind of we kind of one of the the slowest ones that started developing pretty much and so it is it is a lot of old history here and but it, we never had you know we never was a metropolitan city anything like that and was always a little country crossroads. So um, it's kind of what I, I call it because it's, we still got farming in all directions. And uh, uh, so we still got some rural life out here. So do, do you like it? Do you find it a little bit more relaxing or do, do you, you know, are you excited about the future and things like I'm that? I'm excited about the future. Definitely. I definitely um, want to advocate for smart growth. I mean, I do want to keep some of the culture mm -hmm. and legacy but um, just so that we do have things that I don't always have to go to Raleigh or Cary or Durham or even Wake Forest. I'd love to see some more commercial development here without compromising some of the things that we already do have here. So I think it's a unique opportunity where we are and selfishly, like right outside my back door, they're building the public. So I'm excited to see that shopping center come and just all of the other things that are going to be here in the next, you know, I say three to five years. Yeah. And also you got a really interesting story on your business. Uh, you know, like, like I said, I saw you at, a, um, at, a, at an expo, I guess about a year ago, maybe a little bit less than that. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I thought it was really interesting. You had a booth there and staying, things. So you do some interesting things with uh, business solutions, I think is the name of it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so just kind of what is what is your gig in that? What do you do? Yeah, thank you. So it's operations management. And so I focus on the P's of the business, people, processes, and productivity. So the P's it's with um, training, whether it's professional development, leadership development, and it's really building systems and processes so that you run more efficiently. Think about how you want to be product productive. And if you, you can't be productive if you don't have processes. You can't have processes if you don't have the right people and your people aren't trained or your people aren't developed. So I like to marry the three into helping companies really streamline their organization and their operations. And so it may show up as I'm in doing professional development training. I am doing project management and helping you figure out the solution that you need helping you document and make sure you have a plan of action. So I do strategic planning. And then I also do business coaching um, because sometimes you need to have a coach or an advocate to help you to figure out what your next steps are. So I take a unique approach to combining coaching and consulting um, because I, we can come up with this massive game plan, but if you don't know how to implement it, you wasted your money. And I don't want you to walk away from TBL saying that, she took my money and now I don't have any results. It's all about results. So um, I help you with that strategy so that you can be productive. Yeah, I think you, I think that's pretty broad kind of what you described there mm -hmm. meeting, meeting the needs of people. That's, I imagine it's more of the smaller businesses maybe, or some of the first time starters. Um, you know, I used to work for, for a large company. The larger companies, they used to do these things called lean and uh and sig sigma six sigma yeah all those type all those type things so i guess it's a little bit of those ingredients in there somewhere oh definitely so my background is in project management um i have an mba um have my certified project management uh credential so i spent many years in project and portfolio management 
I also have a green Six Sigma belt. Um, so all of that organizational and operations, that sort of like, that's the type of work I did in corporate for several years. And I enjoy doing that, but it's breaking it down so that some smaller organizations can receive that. Because if you're smaller and it's just you, you're great at your craft. You're great at you know, selling a product, but are you really able to efficiently operate a business? And so that's where I like to lean my expertise in to help organizations with that. What What are some indicators if someone have a business and they're, they're you know, they, they got it going, maybe, maybe it's for several years, a couple of years, and they feel like they're just bogged down or something. What are some indicators um, that they, you could, you could tell them if you see these things happening, then I can help you with. Definitely. So if you feel like you're running out of time and you don't know how to prioritize the work that's coming in, there's too much work and maybe not enough people and you can't necessarily afford to hire full time staff, then we need to think of some options to streamline your operations. Um, that growth bubble, like when you get to a certain growth level, there is a need for consulting. You need to bring someone like me in to help you with that. You know, a lot. You kind of mentioned productivity and stuff. A lot of a lot of uh, people. Uh, it's hard to be a business owner. I've never been a business owner per se. I, I've had a lot of you know friends, and you know, in, in this job, you know, I, I talk to a lot of business owners and stuff. But it, it, it's exhausting, I would think. And do you run into that where people just feel like they have just given out almost, and you have to kind of work with them to bring them back into, uh, you know, in, into a, a level that they can sustain, I guess, is what I'm looking at. Absolutely. I mean, especially solopreneurs, it's just you and you're wearing all the hats. It's kind of like you have to find a home for everything in the business. And mm -hmm. I usually use uh, business coaching for those type clients that are at that burnout period, because it's kind of like they need to do a reset and figure out, why am I spending so much time on doing this? Is this a manual process? Do we need to actually buy some software, um, integrate tech into our business model so that we aren't manually, you know, writing down things for our customers? We aren't putting things in a spreadsheet. Is there an app or some type of software that can help streamline that? Um, but really, it starts with that professional development piece, right? Uh, making sure that they do take care of themselves because you can't be of service in your business if you're burnt out. So. Yeah, exactly. What, what businesses do you, uh, do you service? Is it just a brick and mortar businesses that's around this area or is it you do all the way County or what, what's your geographic? No. Yeah, so you? I can work. I have clients. I work with anyone. The beautiful part about this virtual world that we work in, um, we can just hop on a zoom or um, teams or uh, Google meets. And I work with people all over. So I don't just um, have clients here locally. I do work with clients outside of this geographical area. I know, uh, I know with the, uh, with the launch roles or the, you know, they, uh, they are kind of the new uh, people that want to start businesses. Some of them have already started a little business, but they want to learn a little bit more, but, but some of them do. Uh, and I, 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 did you go through that program or you, you uh, I did not No. Yeah. I um, have. Yeah. I think, uh, I think our next guest told me she did go through the program uh, in Wake Forest, but uh, you know, a lot of people do. And um, I, I guess, I guess, do you get a lot of clients from something like that, that, that really is on the ground and trying to figure out which way to turn in, in some cases? I do get inquiries from that. I typically don't work with a lot of startups just because um, they're in the infancy stages and they're trying to figure it out. Um, I, I do. I won't discriminate and say I don't work with startups, but that's not typically the avatar that I work with. Um but I have given some guidance to some startups. Yeah. So, so basically, basically you more target the business, you, whatever people got going on and they're struggling in some way. Uh, how do you get back on track type type thing? And I, I imagine that's pretty rewarding. Is that reward? Is, is that something that really you, you really 
it, it get excited about when you see something? It is because I'm a problem solver and I'm a results person. I have to see the needle moving. So for me to come into your organization and see you, like I'll use professional development training as an example. You say that you want to go through some type of overhaul and we come in and we offer training and we put together, you know, maybe a leadership retreat or something like that so that we help the team buy into the change because it, it starts with the why they have to understand why. And I want to see that group working cohesively. And so it's a check the box thing. You've, we've, we've, we've accomplished our goal. So it's about setting goals. Mm -hmm. you, you know, um, I, I imagine, I imagine every business is different and, mm -hmm. and all struck all the struggles are different for business. Some may have financial troubles. Some may have, you know, they don't have enough help. They don't have, they can't meet their, uh, their needs and stuff. So you have to be very, uh, very broad and, and you can't be specialized. You got to be able to, to, to understand the problem. And like you said, problem solve it. You know, it, it has to be, it has to be that, uh, the type of person that can solve problems. I would think. Is that, Definitely. Is that it, it's going into firefighter mode and like going in to solve the problem. But um, themes are usually, it's different industries. Like, you know, I work with small businesses who are, service base like i have some contractors i have a pressure washing client i have hvac companies then i have corporate clients but at the core themes are very similar we aren't using our time wisely we aren't running as efficiently as we need to and so that happens so yeah so i, th I think we just had this the service uh, portfolio pop up so, oh, sure. We can talk through that. Yeah. So this this is kind of this is kind of the where you start from, right? This is your playbook. This is sort of my playbook. Yeah. Yeah. Tell All us right. tell Let's us a little it. bit about that about about what you what's what what you would find in there. All right. So who are we? We talked about this. We are an operations management firm. So we work on um, organizational development, process refinement, um, and we uh, strive for heightened productivity. Um, so three core things, coaching, training, and consulting. Um, so business coaching, um, I usually work with clients for 90 day engagement, and then we go from there. Um, so that's our business coaching, um, process improvement, coming up with solutions to optimize efficiency um, or processes, uh, strategic planning and growth opt optimization, you have to have strategic planning in order to grow. So that's something that I work with organizations and businesses on. Project management and implementation management. Um, as I mentioned, I am a project management professional. Um, so helping just come in and bring those projects and ideas to life and then actually helping you to implement them. Being able to seamlessly implement tech into your culture. And that goes into change management. And so next up are our, you can go to the next slide, please, our training solutions. Um, and so that's professional development. So soft skills, communication, time management, um, things of that nature, corporate facilitation. So workshops, retreats, things like that, um, strategic planning, and then leadership and executive coaching. Um, so helping leaders transform into strategic CEOs, team development, and we can skip past that. This just goes into more detail. All of this information is available on my website, www.tblconsults.com. Um, our office number is 984-235-5713. And you can give me an email at info at tblconsults.com. So I believe that's my time, Mayor Curran. I've enjoyed talking with you. Yeah. We can keep going here, but I know you got another guest. But um, we're also on Facebook and Instagram. So thank we, you. We do. We do. But, you know, um, this, this excites me, you know, this business thing. And, and you know, all businesses, even towns, you know, been a, you, you mentioned strategic planning. You know, you got to know where you're going. And, you know, we, we're doing a strategic planning session now with town. We do it about every four years because four years things are different in four years so you have to 
you have to continue to do that. And I guess business wise, you continue to change your plan. I mean, you can't do a plan and, and keep it for many, many years. You so so you kind of ongoing sometimes talking to the business owners. Is that is that definitely kind of ongoing? I mean, you know, your plan can be three to five years, or you can do a one year plan, but you definitely need to be making sure that you're paying attention to it and you're tracking your progress because if you're not tracking your progress, it's just words on paper. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's not like you just come in and talk to them and pack up and go. You, sometimes you, you're staying with them to make sure they're working their plan. And oh, kind of, definitely. Yes, that's absolutely. Really, it's really cool. It's, it's yeah. a, it, it sounds like it's really a cool job and you get into it and it, it's really, it's really good. Peter, do you have any comments, any, anything you want to ask? Uh, Peter, where's Peter? I mean, I mean, <laughs> you know, Peter, my buddy. I'm, I'm good. I uh, actually, I will point out, Tisha and I had a quick conversation after uh, Youth Leadership finished up this morning. Um, I may bring her on. Uh, she would like to be a producer for you on the show. We may alternate going forward. She's very familiar with uh, the uh, application we use to do this, mm -hmm. and uh, let's let's spread the love and uh, bring in a variety. So. Yeah, uh, pop that yeah. on you real quick. That's that's uh, cool. But, uh, Actually, I think you have co-hosted one time, have you not? No, uh, I haven't. No. I know some of the chamber people have have co-hosted, so that, that's cool. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it uh, it's good to have two people, kind of, because really the background person and then uh, then the person co-host. But really enjoyed having you. Uh, great job. You've, you've, you've got a lot of things going on. Are you going to do the leadership next year or you don't know yet? Um, we're still working those details out, but likely yes. <laughs> okay, cool. You did a great job this year. Thank really you. did. Um, and, and, you know, you, those, those kids uh, are not kids, they're young adults, really. They, they yeah, what, I, what I saw, Ronnie, was, um, you know, I was watching the, uh, the presentations and watching these kids, dang, dang it, you know, it was a gut check to my ego going, okay, I'm 61. My time is nearing an end. This is the new wave. That <laughs> it is. Was, had the, the energy, the drive, the, the intelligence, the snappiness. It was like, oh, wow. I haven't felt that kind of energy inside of my own brain in, in a good long time. <laughs> so. Yeah. They're very creative too. I mean, they're very, you know, you, 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 they, they do things that it wouldn't work for me and you, Philip. I mean, you know, yep. we we just not like that, but yeah. uh, but they're so creative. Oh, and it's, just, it's just exciting. They make it exciting for sure. It, they do. They really do. And I know. I know it makes it exciting for you working with them. Uh, oh, absolutely! It keeps me so, sharp and on my toes as well. I learn from them just as much as I pour into them. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. See you soon. All righty. Bye. Yep. And Bye. Philip, we got one more guest tonight, um, Coach Val. You know Coach Val, I think. Uh, yeah, Coach Val Grasso. I met her uh, when I was running Nerds to Go in Wake Forest. She uh, was a customer and a, a another networking crazy like I was. And we saw each other around town, around the area. And, uh, yeah, I got to know her and uh, very eager to bring her up and see what she has to say tonight. Let me add her to the stage. Yeah, she got an interesting business, too. So um, talk to her. Uh, a few a few times about her business and uh, and really really she got it going on. Welcome, Coach Val. Appreciate thank you coming on the show. Hi, I'll I'll let you guys talk. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I hope you're doing well. I mean, you can't I get up. It, the weather here is getting a little bit rough, so um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll get through this. You know, fairly good without a lot of hiccups uh, on the weather. But are you doing well? Is things going well health wise and physical wise and you got a lot of things going on for sure. I am doing great. Kind of introduce yourself. I know, um, I think you're from uh, kind of the Maryland, Washington area. Um, yes, I, yeah. I am Valerie Grasso, Coach Val. I grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. My husband and I both worked for the federal government. We retired in 2016 and moved to the lakes of Roseville, which is right here. And I uh, just love it. I've been here eight years. It's been a wonderful experience. I love living in this, this beautiful community. And what was so exciting when we first moved here was that a neighbor 
told me you must join Granite Falls. And I said, why? He said, because it's three miles and seven minutes from our front door. And that's what I did. I joined Granite Falls and a wonderful experience because I found myself in a fitness community with like-minded individuals. And so that's been a big part of my journey here. Yeah. What, what, um, since you've been in Roseville, um, you know, it's much different from, from the DC area, Maryland early, uh, area, I would think. What, what do you, what do you like about this area or do you like anything about the Roseville area? I love the area. It's quiet. It's peaceful. There's lots of green space. It's not as densely populated as the, we call it the DMV, DC, Maryland and Virginia. And, uh, I just, really landed in a good place with wonderful people uh, in my community and, and, you know, throughout uh, the Wake County area. So, so I immersed myself, I got really involved in a lot of different things. And I got into fitness many, many years ago when I was in Maryland, but you know, I worked full time. And when I came here and joined Granite Falls, I got involved in triathlons. And so I finished about 15 triathlons and, you know, done well with that and always was involved in fitness. Initially, I was a certified running coach and I've completed six marathons and lots of other races. But after that, I started getting into strength training and it was a whole new world for me because as a runner, I did not do strength training. Runners run. They don't usually do resistance training. But in particular it has really saved my life yeah you sounds like sounds like your business uh was something you almost took up as a hobby or or maybe you know as a fitness thing to, to be more healthy and you turn you figure out a way to turn it into a business is that i uh, did it and you know what i have always wanted to you know it's almost like evangelizing it's talking about why fitness is important. It's, it's really important to me. And it's important to me to share the word, share the good news with other people. And I went through a program called Launch Wake Forest. And mm -hmm. it's a 10 week entrepreneurial program to help individuals who think they might want to open a business, start a business to really think seriously about it. And I completed the program in May of 2022. And during that time, you know, you're doing a lot of uh, thinking about the future and where do you want this to go? And I found this mobile fitness trailer and I decided to buy the mobile fitness trailer and attach it to my truck and go around to parks and different places to really help people to learn the proper ways to, to lift and to do strength training. And so that's what I did. Um, I started about a year ago and, you know, a year ago I had my ribbon cuttings mm -hmm. at, the, uh, at one was at Rise here in Roseville and the other was at the uh, Wake Forest Chamber of Commerce. And so it's been about a year and a year of starting a business and it's been exciting. Uh, but, you know, I have a lot to learn and I'm, I'm, I have, clients and i'm really interested in getting out and broadening you know the appeal of outdoor exercise mm -hmm. so my trailer is an outdoor exercise unit when you open my trailer there's enough equipment inside to work out about 30 people at a time and so it's boot camp style with stations right so you you kind of target not individuals as much as groups is it kind of groups you kind of want to to uh to target well like, like you know if i were to think about the most ideal setting it would be small businesses who mm -hmm. have a workforce that they want to energize and it's not just about fitness it's i i call it nutrition fitness and health all three are equally as important most people want to focus in on the fitness alone but i think all three are important also this is the spring and in the spring you have youth athletic groups starting to get ready for soccer and and basketball and football and other sports cross country in august 
And so what I'd like to see is more groups take advantage of this opportunity. I come in, I start where you are, I work out on your turf and bring the equipment and the knowledge and the education to you. That sounds very interesting. And uh, so you, you're kind of, uh, you, you kind of got some businesses sort of in mind, uh, how you going to do that? Do you do it like do. You do do. It before work or after work or how do you, how do you, how do you, what's the best, what's the best time to do it, I guess? Well, you know, it depends. If it's school age children, it would be during the day when mm -hmm. they would normally have physical education. High schoolers, they usually start extracurricular activities after school. So we're talking in that 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. time frame. Uh, it could be at any time. I used to be the one of the coaches at the St. Uh, Catherine of Siena uh, school, one of the uh, coaches for the cross country team. I did that for about three years. And that was a lot of fun working with young people and, you know, just starting to get people to thinking about fitness mm -hmm. as a way of life, not just the competition of it, but building stronger bodies. Why, why is it important uh, for people to think about fitness as a way of life, as you put it there? What's the what's the benefits? What what is what did they get from that? Well, let's think about that for a minute. Um, the American Heart Association says that we need 150 minutes of exercise every week. So it works out about 30 minutes a day, you know, over most days. Mm -hmm. uh, but only half of those people, nearly 50% of all people do about 150 minutes of exercise a week. That's what the statistics say, but only half actually do strength training, resistance training. And that's really what we need. You know, when we think about exercise, most people think about cardio. Oh, I walk or I run. Cardio only gets you so far. Resistance training helps to build stronger muscles. And that's what we really need. Think about the activities of daily living. You know, we're going to the grocery store. We're lifting up items. We're getting down on the floor, playing with our children and grandchildren. We're walking the perimeter of the store. We're performing yard work. You know, there are so many activities of daily living going up and down stairs. I have clients who were out walking their dogs and they tripped over an uneven part of the sidewalk and, you know, injured themselves. So this is eminently practical because we need to keep our bodies upright and we need to uh, just prevent injury and get stronger. Yeah. You, I, th I think like you're saying, some of the, some of the things like walking and all, you know, you, you do a little bit of that naturally, but I guess you don't do a lot of strength training naturally uh, as much, uh, but you know, um, you know, my story is the COVID story prior, prior COVID, you know, I had a little routine about three days a week, went to the gym, did, you know, weights and things like that. And then COVID sort of through, through mouth track. And that's, I have, a very, that's a very common. And I never, I haven't been, it's something that's hard to do, but you got to really, you got to really, you got to really get into it and you got to make it a habit or something, right? How do you well, do that? Well, my current, I would challenge you to hire me for a session and I can get you back onto your schedule. So right. how do you make it a habit? Well, first of all, you have to say yes, you have to start. And people, I've heard people say, oh, I know I need to do that, but I want to wait until I lose 10 pounds, or I want to wait until this happens. And I think the time to start is right now, because when I work with people, I start where they are to take them to where they want to be. So I don't have any preconceived notions of, you know, anything. I give you an assessment. I have a four page assessment where I'm looking at injuries, illness. What did you do in high school? What are the activities that bring you joy? The best exercise for anyone is the one that you will do, regardless of what people recommend. It has to be something that will bring you some joy. And then starting there, starting with small amounts of weights, resistance bands, 
body weight exercises where you don't use any equipment at all. You just use your own body weight, like planks and push-ups and exercises that you can do on your own. But I think if you're going to start a uh, strength training program, you really should hire someone just to get you started. So get you motivated. Get you motivated and to have the right form. So yeah. you want to make sure you have the right form, you know how to use equipment so you don't incur injury. Right, right. Yeah, also, you know, some people, you know, you're talking about the, the you know, resistant machines and stuff. And, you know, I've, I've heard stories with, you know, people buy those things for their house, you know, with the plan of using them and things like that. But um, it, it, how do you recommend getting, you know, getting – getting motivated to do that do you need a partner what what do you what do you suggest so i think accountability is so important i love the idea of an accountability partner and maybe having two so these are two individuals whom you make a pact with that you are going to work out walk or do something two to three times a week and even if one of those individuals is not available the other two are. And in accountability, particularly in the beginning, is really important. Having other people who like, are like-minded and want to go with you on this fitness journey. The other piece is starting slow. So January, what happens? Everybody joins the gym. You know, they're very motivated, New Year's resolutions. And by February, those gyms are empty. And the reason why is because people started out with the best of intentions, but need to learn how to moderate their expectations and to take it one step at a time. Yeah. Um, so, so this fitness buddy or you know partner to to uh, to work with, uh, it just it makes it. You said accountability is a word. I think I heard you say. That so, is the word. Because I imagine, is it is anybody really successful doing it at home, or do you really? Sure. Need, they people are. People are very successful. You know, there's lots of ways to do accountability. You could hire a personal trainer. You could keep a journal. You could talk to a registered dietitian and work out. You know. And there's lots of ways to achieve the same goal, but I like the idea of accountability uh, because it's you're not in it by yourself. There's someone else who's invested in your success and in helping you to not give up. Yeah. So uh, so this sounds like it's pretty exciting. Uh, what, what do you find most exciting about what you do with with helping people? In, in this business? The changes that I see, people who decide I'm going to try this thing. I have clients that I meet with, I have clients I meet with twice a week. I have clients I meet with once a week. I have a client that I meet with 6 a.m. every Monday morning. And the changes that I see that they make over a period of time is the consistency. And then as we work out, they start to talk about what they eat. And people always ask me what I should eat. I am not a registered dietitian. I, I don't play one, but I will give you advice as to what I do. And I can direct you to the appropriate professionals that can give you advice. But it all starts with the first step. Yeah, you know, uh, one interesting thing about your business, uh, Coach Val, is this trailer. Because I, I know there's people that do uh, trainers, per se, like you was just saying just there. But you got this trailer here that uh, that really kind of sets you apart from some, some regular or other people, right? Yes, this is what makes me different. This is the value that I add to the workout. So this is a good buddy of mine who works out with me before there i am it is a six by 12 trailer it hooks up to the back of my truck and i can take it anywhere 
and I go to where you are. And that is what makes it so wonderful. Right now, I have a vendor relationship with the town of Wake Forest, and I'm in Flaherty Park on Saturdays. Now, these are sessions that people sign up through the town to do strength training for adults, strength training for teens. I have strength training for children. Uh, they don't actually lift weights, but we do other body weight exercises to get kids motivated to succeed. But yeah, the, the trailer is a game changer and it's pretty exciting if you've ever seen it. There's so much great equipment in the trailer and we do outdoor workouts, boot camp style, uh, build a lot of camaraderie and support and it, it's pretty cool. People like it. Yeah. Are you, uh, have you got any networking in with churches and, and those, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess civic places, civic, uh, civic clubs and things like that? I have not, but as I said, I just completed my first year. I met my goals and now I have goals to broaden the use of the trailer. And so this broadcast in particular is at a really good time because now I, I have more of a vision of what I can do, what the capabilities are. Yeah, because I could see it really helpful for maybe even the retirement community. Because, uh, you know, they have times in the morning that you could get a group at a church or get a group at some uh, 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 maybe even a retirement center type place. And I think you do retirement centers some. Um, is that? Yes. A yes, I do. And you know what? People will look at this and they go, oh, I could never do this. Oh, it looks intimidating, but it's really not. It's mm -hmm. really not. So you don't start out with heavy weights. You know, you may start out with the battle ropes. You may start out with just, you know, trying to build some upper body strength, you know, to do uh, upper body work. It, it, we can start with dumbbells, with very light weights, resistance bands. Uh, I use the BOSU ball which is a, a, a really cool uh, piece of equipment. It's flat on one side and round on the other side. There's so many different ways to approach fitness, and I make it fun. Hmm? I don't have people leaving saying this was boring. It, it's fun. It's work, but it's fun. Yeah, and I think, I think uh, in the last uh, few minutes you described all ages. It's, it's good for all ages. You should never quit exercising, I guess. Is that is that a good way to put it? Well, actually, we never do quit exercising because as long as we're alive, the activities of daily living that each of us do requires us to move. We have to move. And then we so need it's about, you know, proper movement and, you know, age related decline. If you work out, particularly strength planning, you can lessen the effects of that as we all age. That's so right. it's, it's important not just to walk and do cardio, but it's important to get some resistance training in. Yeah, I was, you know, I was, I mentioned early in the show about the kids that build the sheds and stuff like that, carpentry work and stuff. Probably people that work construction jobs and lifting and doing stuff all day, uh, maybe not needed as, as much as someone like me, that doesn't do a lot of uh, exercises and, and, and do a lot of work and that uh, uses muscles, all, all my muscles and stuff. And um, it's really it's really us, the ones that don't do the hard, hard lifting that probably should do more of that. Well, consider the fact that most of us spend a lot of time with computers. You know, we're sitting behind a desk. Yeah. Isn't that right, Philip? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And, and working this muscle more than any other muscle in the body. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, uh, so Philip, sounds like we got a challenge. We have to figure out how we're going to, you know, pick it up. Uh, you know, she's talking about you talking about weight. You know, I'm not sure if I need to lose no more weight. I, I've been told I need to put on weight, and I guess strength can do that a little bit. So, so you know what? It's all about fitness, and I think part of the dilemma is we have to unpack people say oh i want to lose weight and it's really not about weight some of the healthiest people i know 
way more than what you would say, you know, is the recommended amount of weight based on your age. It's all about lean muscle mass. It is. It is. It is uh, that's right. It's about muscle, keep your muscles healthy, your bones healthy, you know, your joints healthy, all of that, right? So um, it's, all, it's all about that. Um, see, I see Tisha's back. So appreciate you coming back. Been a good show. So, uh, so Philip, what do you want to wrap up? Any anything? We got a few minutes here. We got everybody back. Um, I do want to. I do want to thank both of our guests. You, you guys you got. You guys got fantastic. You know, one thing about having businesses, and tonight was sort of like a business show talk, talk discussion. And uh, Philip, if you don't mind mute, I think you, you're doing a little echoing. But um, uh, one thing about you know businesses. You know, it's always good to have one that you can enjoy doing. And it, it appeared to me just talking to y'all, uh, both of you, that you really enjoy your businesses. You really enjoy it. It brings joy. To, it, it, you don't get up every day dreading to go to work. No. So, uh, so that, that's really that's really good. And uh, and really appreciate both of you coming on the show and uh, you. about your businesses. And I hope people listening. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll, you know, use your numbers and get in touch with you, especially if you got a business that needs some help with uh, management and uh, and just figuring out things. And also somebody like me that <clears throat> needs uh, needs some motivation to get out there and do some some uh, some exercising. So um, so really, really do appreciate it. Thank you all for coming on. Any closing comments from from you, either one of you? No, thank you for having us. And um, Coach Val stepped all over my toes about making sure you stay consistent and have the accountability for weight loss. So um, I enjoyed hearing her um, speak. But yeah, I, I'm definitely I offer consultation. So happy yeah. to connect with any business owners who just want to have a conversation to figure out what their next steps are, because sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So that's right. Um, Definitely. So I asked a couple of my clients today, um, what do you think I should say? And they said, emphasize starting where you are, that it's not overwhelming. Measure your progress. Focus on your goals. Think of it as real life stuff like carrying in groceries, getting down on the floor and playing with my grandchildren, walking up and down stairs, mm -hmm. walking the perimeter of the grocery store without jumping into one of the carts. Uh, and they talked about needing someone to walk them through the process. And that's why we as personal parents, yeah. that's what we do. Yeah. You know, one the interesting thing, having both of you uh, on the show, y'all, y'all, you both have two different businesses, but a lot of the principles is just overlap. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. You know, <laughs> it is. It, it's, yeah. inter it's interesting because the principles is not that far apart. I mean, you know, you just have to be motivated and all these kind of things and, um, and really, really great. So thank y'all both. Appreciate you coming on the show. Um, uh, Philip, before we go, I do want to mention a couple of items um, that I have coming up. And, um, and then you can you can mention a couple you got coming up. Um, All right. Yep. Um, so you want to go, go ahead and mention yours and then I'll close with who's going to be on the show next. Week. Yeah, real quick. We've got uh, a lunch and learn on the uh, on April 18th here at the chamber. Uh, David Williams from Adventures Beyond the Couch is going to be coaching men's health, specifically men over 40. So if you're like me, come on out and join us. And then uh, let's see. Uh, how do I go back? Here we go. Uh, let's have some fun. We got a business after hours on April 25th, five to seven. It's always the fourth Thursday of the month. We're going to be back at the, uh, main street tavern and David is hosting that. So you'll get a lot of David this month from us. And then, uh, for those veterans out there, please feel free to register. We'd love to have you come out. We're going to feature you for uh, a luncheon on May 14th. This is to honor your service. So any, uh, veterans or active duty personnel, or reserve, please come out and join us. Uh, go to the website here. There's a, uh, if you go to the Rollsville uh, Chamber website and our calendar, you'll find it on May 14th. Please register and join us. Back to you, Ronnie. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Uh, you know, it's a lot of a lot of things happens happens in May, um, so that's a that's a pretty big month. And um, 
some, sometimes I try to do these shows sort of a, a theme, like tonight was the chamber business night theme. Uh, I had two the chamber businesses. Next month, May, um, I, I kind of found out that there's a there's an Older Americans Month uh, of May um, where you recognize older Americans, senior citizens, uh, another way to talk about that. Uh, there's several things in May do, you know, got Memorial Day and, um, you know, those type of things. But next month, uh, I got two great guests coming on, uh, Carla Wayne Payne, Carla White, White Payne, which is the owner of Aging Care Matters. Uh, we'll have her own. I think uh, she's she's a member of the chamber, too, I believe. Uh, but she'll, she be coming on, she'll be coming on talking to us. And then our new uh, town liaison to the uh, senior citizens, uh, Michael Powell, uh, he's going to be coming on talking about some of the things uh, that he visions the town uh, will kind of support the senior citizens. So next next month we'll be focused on senior citizens. Looking forward to it. Got two good guests coming on. Uh, should, Excellent. Should be a lot of a lot of discussion there. And then uh, looking out two months from now, uh, the June meeting um, kind of focus on Juneteenth. Um, you know, that's that's in June 19th, I think. And uh, we're going to focus uh, two guests on that show. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit of next month. But we got we got some great lineups uh, coming up. So I hope everybody stays tuned in. Uh, we had a great show tonight. Appreciate it. I uh, hope uh, hope you guys uh, really um, got got a chance to to talk about your businesses. And, that, and that's that's really great. So Anything closing? Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can close us out. You want to? We're good to go. Thank you, everybody that tuned in. Uh, so we had quite a few viewers tonight, and thank you for our guests, and thank you, Mayor Curran. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great evening. Good night. Thank you.